What's going on guys? I'm Rob Sigler. Today we're talking all about frequency separation. You may have seen this used before when people retouch skin. However, there are a lot of practical uses for this powerful technique. And this is a technique that all photographers should know how to do. So sit back, relax, and let's take a look at frequency separation. So what exactly is frequency separation? Well, it's a technique that every photographer should use, and it's actually very, very easy. In fact, below this video, I put a download link so you can download your own frequency separation action for free. And I'm not going to show you how to make the action in this video. There are plenty of other videos that do that. Instead, I'm going to show you some practical uses, not only skin, but clothing and texture where frequency separation can save you tons and tons of time. Here's the first portrait we're going to work on today, and this is a business portrait that I took against a green screen. When you run the frequency separation action, what it's going to do is take our main image and it's going to divide it into two main parts. The layer on the left is called the low frequency, and that's the layer that's going to contain all of our color information. The layer on the right that you see is called high frequency, and that is our detail information. 99% of what we're gonna do is going to be on the low frequency layer or the color layer. Basically, what we're gonna do is use the mixer brush to shove and smear the colors around, but we're not gonna affect the texture. Once we put these layers back on top of each other, we will see our final image. So let's see how this works. The only tool we're gonna to use in frequency separation is the mixer brush. You may not be familiar with this brush, so I wanna introduce it to you if it is new. The mixer brush is the brush with the little drop on it. And what happens is when you color on your screen, it will mix whatever colors it touches together. It's almost like having wet watercolors when you were in kindergarten. Now there are a few brush settings that you're gonna to want to make sure that you take a look at. First of all, the only button you're gonna to wanna to have pressed up here is the second button. And what this button does is cleans the brush after each use. So if you were painting with watercolor and then you move to another color, what it basically does is dips your brush in the water, rinses it clean, and then starts fresh. If we use this button, what it does is soaks up color in the brush, and then you can transport it to another part of the screen. For retouching, we don't need to do that. We want our brush to be clean after every stroke. So make sure the first button is turned off and the second button is pressed. Now there are some brush presets you can choose from, and it's probably time for Adobe to change the name of these brushes. However, the wet brush will suffice with anything we do with frequency separation. Now I have found the best way to blend two colors is just to draw little circles or paint circles over the two colors. If you draw a line, it has this sort of blocky look to it and we definitely don't want that. We want smooth transitions between colors. Now if we wanted to push the green into the yellow, we could not do circles but kind of push it like that and then blend in the edges if we needed to. So that, in a nutshell, is the mixer brush. Here's the first portrait we're gonna be working on, and let's just stop for a minute and take a look at the picture. What are some of the things we wanna fix? The arms in his jacket are pretty wrinkled. We can fix that. The wrinkles over here we can fix. And if we take a look at his skin, he has some uneven skin tone where it's peach color, then red color. We're gonna smooth all of that together and give him a more even skin tone. But first, let's start with the jacket down here. Now, before we run the action, if there is anything we can fix with the healing brush, we should definitely do that. So like these little fuzzes and pieces of hair on his jacket, we should definitely fix that before we do the frequency separation. Now the moment of truth, let's run the action. If you have an 8-bit image, then you should run the action that says frequency separation 8-bit, and 16-bit would be this action. So let's do the first one. 
And the first thing that pops up is going to be a dialog box for Gaussian blur. Now take a look at the arm of this jacket. What makes the jacket look wrinkled? And the answer is the tones. For example, this dark spot right next to a light spot makes it look like a wrinkle. Here's another dark shadow followed by a light spot. It makes it look like a wrinkle. So let's take the jacket and what we're going to do is blur until we don't see the pinstripes. So I'm going to turn the blur up to 8.7, hit OK, and let's take a look at what it's done. I'm going to turn off my background layer. Here is the low frequency layer, the layer that has all the color in it. And here is the high frequency layer, the layer that has all the texture in it. If we just look at our low layer, we can see that we have colors, and it obviously looks blurry. There's not a lot of definition. And if we turn on our high frequency layer, we can see the pinstripes. We can see the outline of his face. We can see all the detail in his hair, but we don't see any color. Now, using the linear light blend mode, when we turn these two layers on at the same time, they sort of cancel each other out, and the result is our final image. Let's start on the low frequency with the mixer brush. And all I'm gonna do is draw small little circles on these wrinkles and blend the color together so that the jacket doesn't look wrinkled. And there we go, that's starting to look pretty good. Let's get over here on this arm. Now, obviously, we're not going to make it look perfect. It's not like the jacket is going to come out dry cleaned. It is, however, going to reduce the eyesore that these wrinkles were. Now, what about his shirt? Let's select W for the wand tool, and let's make a quick selection of his shirt. There we go. Now, I'm going to go back to the blending brush, and I'm going to blend out these gray little shadows so that the wrinkles in his shirt disappear. Do a little on this side. And there we go. So how much have we changed this portrait already? Well, here's our original and here's the edit. Take a look at the sleeves of his jacket. Now, if it's too much, we could always reduce the opacity of the group that has frequency separation in it. But I think it looks pretty good at 100%. Perfect. Let's flatten our image and let's run this action again. So I'm just going to hit play. This time, we want to work on his skin a little bit. Now, we want to increase the radius until we lose the detail in his skin. So let's take a look at his skin. So this radius isn't going to be quite as high as our jacket. So I think at four, we really lose the detail in his skin. So I'm going to leave it right at four. Now with the mixing brush, I'm going to just draw in circles to sort of smooth out the skin tone a little bit. Now that looks a little bit strong, so we can turn it down just a touch. And I always like to zoom out because that gives a completely different perspective. Look at before and after. Just two seconds of coloring with the mixer brush did that much. Now it still looks a little strong, so I might back off just a little bit. Now I'll flatten the image and we'll finish it off in Camera Raw by adding a little bit of a vignette. And let's take a snapshot of this picture. So in about two minutes, we went from here to here, here to here. How cool is that? 
super easy using frequency separation. Let's take a look at another example. In this image, there are definitely some spots in the clothing that we can smooth out. So we'll do frequency separation once on her jacket, and then we can do it again on her skin. So I'm gonna come up to the actions palette where it says frequency separation 8-bit, hit play. Now let's do her jacket first. So let's move our preview window till we see the jacket. We basically want to blur it to the point where the detail is gone. So if I click on this window, it will show the before and after. And I think that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll just turn it up to four to live on the edge. And now we're ready to work. So I will zoom in to 100%. I will select the mixer brush, which again is the brush with the little drop by it. And I'm just gonna cover up some of these shadows that are in her jacket. We can kind of fix this in her shirt. And again, not to the point that it looks like it just came out of the dry cleaner. We just wanna make it less visible so that it blends in a little bit better. We can do a little on this arm. And that looks pretty good. Let's see before and after, before and after. Let's flatten our image and we'll run the action one more time on her skin. And we definitely don't need 14. So let's turn that down to right around four. And I've got my mixer brush selected and I'm just gonna paint in little circles just to blend these tones together. Now at 100%, it may not look like you're doing much, but when we zoom back out, you'll be able to see the difference that we've made. Now there are definitely some things here I would fix with the healing brush before we started. But just for this example, I just wanted to show you whoops, how easy it is to smooth out these tones. And there we go. So here is our before and after, before and after, huge improvement. Okay, now how many times has this happened to you? You go out for a really long run and you come back looking like this. I am not proud of this moment, but I'm gonna show you how to fix it. We're gonna go up to our action and run the action. And we only want to blur to get these little hair follicles off the leg, so maybe right around 2.5. I'm gonna hit okay. Now with the mixer brush, I'm just going to smear the tan up the leg. Now look at all the hair follicles, they all stay in place. None of the texture is changing, it's only the color that's changing. And it's okay if we go a little bit outside of the lines because we're going to eventually put a layer mask on this frequency separation layer. There we go. Now let's add a layer mask and with a black brush that's maybe around 70% hardness, I'm just going to erase where I went out of the lines. Now we could fix this little line right here using the healing brush. And look at that, no more tan lines. And by the way, I really don't suggest that you ever Google tan lines because you'll find some pretty interesting stuff. Guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. Whether you're new to frequency separation or you've used it in the past, maybe today you learned something new. If you did, please like and subscribe and we will see you in the next video.